I saw a Pixel Stick a few months ago and I thought, no, that's an interesting device. So I thought I'd come up with a plan for making your own for those of you that uh, need a project or two. This is all designed and made with more or less standard parts. Uh, the LEDs you can buy on Amazon. This aluminum extrusion is from Amazon. The handles, the case, and all this stuff here, this is uh, designed by me and printed on a 3D printer. Uh, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, uh, you can contact me and I'd be glad to make you some copies of it. I will put the STL files on the um, internet eventually. Okay, so this is what it looks like with a single wand, 144 pixels. We'll just run one of these and we can see some interesting barber pole patterns. I have a bunch of built-in patterns. Um, that's one of them. We got a random color bars, which is pretty cool sometimes. You can use it as a light source. It will give you a solid light. You can change the color. Uh, you can change the saturation. You can change the brightness. It's all adjustable. Um, there's some nice twinkly patterns. Some color patterns that are nice for backgrounds. I'm not necessarily a really creative person. You can find lots of websites. Uh, if you just look for pixel stick images, you'll find lots of creative ways to use these things. So this one, like most of them, supports a little SD card and goes right in here. And you can put BMP files on there. And I will put instructions on this uh, video with this video later there, and for how to format those files. But it's pretty straightforward. They're just BMP files in 32-bit format. So they, they should be 144 pixels tall to match this. I did give you the option of doubling the size of this thing. So if you want to go to 288 pixels, you just make another strip here, slide this in. I'm not going to connect it right now, but you slide this in, make the connection. Now you've got a two meter with 288 pixels. So I designed this rotating handle. It's uh, sitting on a couple of roller blade bearings, so it spins easily. And then as you're running the pattern, you can spin this thing and use it uh, to make more interesting patterns. Okay, so that's the second stick option. As you can see, it's running on a battery here. This is one of those lithium ion batteries. It's just bought off Amazon. It's just for using, charging your cell phone, that kind of stuff. It does show the percentage charge remaining. It just snaps in here. Just put a USB connector oops, on there. Originally, I made this cutout so that you could see the percentage battery left. It does run for an awfully long time, by the way. Um, I, it was so bright at night, though, because you typically use this in the dark, right? So I put the put a thin layer of plastic on there to kind of dim it down. If you really want to see it, just take a knife and cut that away. So here's the menu system, which we're going to go through in a minute. Here's the bu single button that controls everything. So it's a rotating dial. It'll rotate through the different files and through the different menu entries. And to activate something, you press it. To jump between playing and menu system, you do a long press. OK, so let's go through those. One of the features it has is the ability to use this as a light source, a light bar. So here's the light bar. It can change the colors change the saturation and you can change the brightness so that, that can be useful too okay let's go through the menu system the first screen you see when you turn it on is a list of files and the top file is always the one that's active so when you press the button to run the file it will be the top one so rotating the dial scrolls down through the files in each folder it does support folders and folders show up with a little tilde in the front there. So if I select this one, if I click on that, it then shows the files that are in that folder. So you can choose those. Uh, the, the last entry is always a caret pressing, selecting the caret and pressing it will bring it back to the parent folder again. If you don't want to see those extra files, there is an option. You can turn that off uh, later. I'll show you how that works. 
To get into the menu system, you do a long press. So you hold it down for about a half a second and it jumps into the menu system. So the first entry is switching between the built-ins and the cards and the, and the files on the SD card. Just a single click changes it. The built-in files are some of those interesting patterns that I put in it. Okay, the next menu, each menu entry, if it has a little plus sign on it, that means it's a sub-menu, and that will go to another menu, set of menu entries. And the little star on the left shows you which one is active. The menus do scroll, in case there's more than one. You'll see a little bar at the top and the bottom in case there's more f entries above and below it. So we'll go to the file image settings. This is where things are like the frame hold. That's how long it will display each frame before it goes to the next one. So to change it, you click and it goes into a thing here that shows you the range. This is true for all integer settings. So this one goes from 0 to 1000. Current value is 10. And if you click it once, if you rotate the dial right now, it just goes up by ones. If you click it, then it'll go up by 10. This makes it easier to make longer jumps. Once you've got one you like, you do a long press and it goes back to where it came from. Start delay. This is after you press the button. There'll be a certain amount of time before it actually starts playing. That's in tenths of a second. In case you want to hold the wand over your head and the picture might be upside down, this will make you upside down the picture to make it right side up again. This is the direction you walk when you're playing, when you're playing it. Again, you can go look at pixel stick examples on the web and you can see how people use these things. It's very similar. So play, uh, oops, go to direction right there. Default is left to right. If you want to go the other way, you can just go right to left. So this reverses the direction it plays the file. It's, it's a little bit slower to play from right to left because it has to read the file in reverse. And file systems weren't really designed for that, but it's still still adequate for most uh, things. You'll find the mirror image option. What that does is it plays your image twice, once forward and once backwards. So it gives kind of a, a mirror, mirror action, mirror kind of image, mirror reflection. Uh, scale the height to fit. In case your image was more than 144 pixels, or more than 288 if you had the 288, if you had the second strip on, then this will reduce it so it fits. It is better to make the images the right size. If you want to use 144, you should make it 144 in Photoshop or whatever you're using. This, this scaling is, is very, it just throws pixels away. It's not very smart about looking at pixels around it. It, it is limited processing power we have in these things. Frame advance, what that does is if, if you have it set in auto, then it uses that frame time, so it holds it for each frame time. If you were to change, if you click on this, it turns into single, and then what it does is it moves one frame either by rotating the dial or by clicking the dial, or if you have a wheel with a pulse encoder on it, each number of pulses, which you can set here, set to zero right now, but each number of pulses would then advance one frame. That way you can synchronize the image display with uh, rolling a wheel across the ground. I haven't designed the, the holder for that wheel yet, but uh, it's, it's on my, my to-do list. All menus uh, will have a previous menu at the top and the bottom, the minus sign in the front. What that does is go back up a level. Okay, repeat settings. This is uh, things like repeating the file. So if you set it to two, then it would play the file twice. There's a delay you can put between each play. What chain files does, clicking it turns it on, obviously, and clicking it again turns it off. What it does is it lets you play all of the files from the current selection all the way to the end of the file within that folder. And they are alphabetically sorted, so if you wanted to have them in a certain order, you have to make sure that you name them correctly. So an example would be file one, file two, file three, and file four then it would play those file one, two, three, and four in order before it stops. Um, you can also have it repeat. You can do the chain repeat. And there's a chain delay if you want to have a delay between each version of it or between each run. Okay, the next one is the LED strip settings. Here's where you can set the brightness. You can change between one and two strips. Gamma correction, that corrects the, uh, the color brightness so that it matches more closely to what we see with our eyes. 
it's, uh, by default it's on because it does make the colors a little more accurate. My experience is a lot of these colors don't have to be super accurate because we're trying for strange effects anyway. So you might want to turn that off. If you don't like the color of what it considers as white balance, you can adjust the red, green, and blue channels individually here. Okay, the next menu is IPC file operations. Those are, I call this thing the LED image painter. So image, IPC is image painter control. What it is is the settings for the, for the LED and, and everything else and the files and all that stuff, frame, frame hold and all that. Those things can be set from a file. And these files can be what's called a startup file, which will be run whenever you select a folder. And it can also be the same as the name of one of your image files, in which case, when it runs that image file, it will choose those settings for it. That way you can preset the settings for a given file. What you do is you just set the way you want it, set the file and set the way you want it, and then you go and set the uh, associated file, which is right here. So associated files, that's the ones that are attached to a given image. And this, the startup one is the one that starts, up, starts when you enter a file, when you enter a folder, sorry. Okay, the next menu is the macros. Macros are sequences of operations that you can record. There are 10 of them numbered from zero to nine. And what you do is you just go in and you turn on recording for whichever one you've selected and then play the files you want, do the settings you want and all that, and then, and then stop recording. And then you can run that file or run that macro anytime you want. So it's pretty useful for combining images. So when I, when I select that, you'll see the first menu entry here is select which macro you want. So we will show you if it's used or empty. So if we select number one, it's empty. Go back, you can see number one has been selected. I can run, well, it's empty, so it's not gonna do anything. If I turn on recording, then it will let me record what I want to do. And then when I'm done, I turn it off and then I can run it at that point. When you're playing it, you can have it repeat the macro as many times as you want. You can also put a little delay between each repeat. You can also just load it if you just wanted to get the saved settings from it because you want to use them for something else. Okay, the next menu is uh, saved settings. These are the, all of the settings of this thing that are the defaults. So I've chosen a certain set of defaults, like 20 milliseconds for the frame hold time and 25% brightness and that kind of stuff. So if you want to change those settings, you can change them the way you like it and do a, let's see, click on that, and do a save current settings. You can load them anytime you want in case you'd messed something up or just want to go to one of your saved settings. And then if you turn on auto load, saved, what it does is when you first turn the system on, when you first hook up the USB plug, then it will take those settings that you have saved as the new defaults. System settings, these are various things you can control. The display brightness, so if you think it's too bright, you can dim it and brighten it. Long press gets you out of that. Uh, Display normal if you want to reverse it, in case you like black on blue, you can just click that. The menu wrap, that is the behavior of menus. Right now, if you continue to rotate past the top or the bottom, it would just pin and stay at the top or the bottom. If you put wrap on, then when you go to the bottom and go try to go to the next one, it'll go back to the top again. So it kind of rolls around. Some people like that, some people get disoriented. It's an option. Show more files, what that does is the long press always takes you back to the run menu, to this, the main screen, by the way. So right now we see the, the current files on the top. That's the one that's going to run if I press, the, if I click the button. And underneath are the next three files in that folder. If I turn this off, it only shows the top line. So in case those extra files are confusing you, eh, just turn it off. Uh, show folder, that's, right now there's a little slash in the front of that, so it shows that we are in the root folder of that device. If we were to select one of these others, like uh, balloon, then you'll see it's balloon slash B1. If you didn't want to see the folder, you can just turn that off. See, now it just shows B1.bmp. Okay. The progress bar, that's the progress bar that shows when it's running. So when a file is actually running, you'll see a progress bar runs across the top. 
if you want to turn that off. Or if you don't want to use it, then you can just turn progress bar off and then it won't show it. I find it useful, but some people won't. The dial, if you don't like the way the dial rotates and you think it's backwards, then you can reverse it. Long press, it's set to about 0.4 second right now, almost half a second. If you want it longer or shorter, you can just change this number. Um, it works in, in uh, 10 milliseconds, so you just multiply by 10 and it'll give you the seconds. So right now, this would be 400 milliseconds. And the last entry is Bluetooth. There is a Bluetooth link. It, it hooks into a phone app. The phone app lets you see the files and run them and change the brightness and stuff like that. I don't honestly know if that's useful or not. Uh, mostly I did it because I could. And if somebody wants, I'd be glad to share that as well. Okay, now the last min or the next one is the light bar. That lets you use this thing as a light source. It turns all the LEDs to the same color. So when you first go into it, it says the U, and you can rotate this and change the U, as you can see. Uh, if you click it, then it goes and changes the saturation. So you can raise and lower the saturation. Click it again, it changes the brightness. Click it one more time, and it goes back to, no, then it goes to letting you change the step size. So in case you want to have finer steps for each click of the dial. So it goes between 110 and 100, as you can see. Click it again, it goes back to you, it cycles around. A uh, long click gets you out of here and goes back. The last entry is reboot. What that does is the same as just on a computer, it reboots. So you click on that, it'll, it waits two seconds and then it reboots everything. The reason for the two second wait is if you've got your saved settings and you've got auto load and you don't like those saved settings and they're messing you up somehow, then you can hold the button down while it's booting and then it will ignore your startup setting, your default uh, saved startup settings. Okay, that's about it for the menu system. The initial version of this thing that I made, the <clears throat> card with the little Arduino card was just stuck in there and then everything was kind of hand wired. Kind of looks like a rat's nest. So I said, yeah, this is crazy. I don't even want to make another one of these. So I designed a circuit, printed circuit board for it. And if anybody's interested in making one of these, I'd be glad to make those cards available. I could even pre-assemble it if you don't have the ability to program the uh, ESP32 that I used here. After I made the first part of the video, it was a little too bright in here so you couldn't really see the colors of this thing. So let's uh, see if this isn't a little better. What we can do too is make it a bit brighter. So we'll go to the settings. Okay, now if we run this, we should be able to see those colors a little more intense. I did with it the other night, just to show what it can do. This is one of the built-in, or some of the built-in. This one is uh, one of the BMP files, of course. This is the built-in pattern. That's just those random color bars. These are a BMP of flames that I created in Photoshop. It looks pretty realistic, you know, it lights up the floor. This is one of the built-in patterns. It just kind of wiggles. This is another built-in pattern. Some color bars that move up and down. Um, this is a BMP file of Slimer. You can see how you can see through it. The uh, perennially favorite Millennial Falcon. And another one of those patterns that goes up and down.